The Leo and Danny Show. Fan fucking Jerry. That's me. That's my name. Don't worry out. How are you feeling right now? You a little nervous? Yeah, I'm always nervous. 20,000 people are going to see this. That's that's it's more nuts. than the uh, 1.5 thousand that watch your YouTube videos. Uh-huh. Should... Thanks, Dick. No problem. I've decided a good topic for us to wrap up on is how we met and where you were in your life when we met. Yeah, it's a Patreon video I have. Well, only three people are going to see that, so... Uh, seven people watch Good thing it. I don't Thank feel you. like we're recycling content. You messaged me when. Can you uh, pull that up on your phone? When yeah. was the first official message? This is what happened, and this might be interesting to people. I don't think I've really talked not comedically or not tried to make a big joke out of it about how the channel grew. But it started by me in my studio apartment working as a busboy in Vegas, getting rejected from screenwriting school, USC and UCLA, back to back, and thinking to myself, hey, I gotta make a move. Books didn't happen, school didn't happen. What's going to happen? Or are you just going to move back into a square job? Right when I was thinking that way, an ad came up for this course called Jump Cut by the guys who used to operate a channel, Simple Pickup, on YouTube that I used to enjoy. It would teach you how to run a YouTube channel, how to grow it. And I thought, hey, why not video? I'm good with people. I'm a relatively handsome fellow sometimes, I think. And I can use it to get my writing out there to more people. Yeah. I took the course... And there was one of the instructors in particular who was really beating the drum of Facebook. Facebook, he argued, was an easy place to grow on. There were all these hacks you could use, making your videos taller, subtitling them, the type of content you made that you knew would go viral. And so I did videos where I was interviewing girls on the Vegas Strip, which a million and a half douchebags have done before. But underneath these interview videos that they bring a lot of people in was some pretty interesting comedy writing. My performances back then suck. I'm wooden. I'm like boring. Them. Thank you. I appreciate it. They're good videos. They yeah, have that's where I started watching you. Facebook. You started watching me on Facebook. Yep. And eventually, because I was so writing focused back then, I only uploaded about one video a month. So I had a lot of time to dedicate to scripts. Nowadays, it's not as easy to get an in-depth script done just because I have so many demands on my time. But one that I wrote was basically a piece of stand-up comedy called Why Guys Masturbate. That is still one of my favorite videos. Fan Jerry loves it. I wrote it and I checked out a room at the New York, New York to record it. Because if you've seen Fan Jerry's channel, you notice that he talks really quietly in his videos because he's afraid of being judged by the neighbors. That's I had this, exactly what it is. I had the same fucking fear. So I rented a room, and I was like, I can be loud as shit. I still had to get liquored up so that somebody walking down the hotel or a maid coming by with the maid cart wouldn't overhear me. Or if she did overhear me, I wouldn't care. So I drank like three tall boys of Modelo, recorded that video. I ended up hooking up with my future girlfriend that time for the first time that night, too, after recording it. But this big page called Fortify Games, the guy, I was in contact with the guy, and I still am. His name's Zeb Jaffer. Uh, he's, I think he actually appreciates the channel, so him and I stay in touch. He reposted it, and at first not much happened. It got like 30,000 views, but then it picked up traction at some point, and before I knew it, it was at 700,000, 800,000 views, which I think was when Fan Jerry saw it. Yeah, yep, the peak of it. I think it was in November. Yeah, exactly. It was around Thanksgiving time. It's still up on my YouTube channel. It's not bad. I re listened to it. It's not that bad of a script at all. It got taken down because I used the word hajis to describe uh, the soldiers in the Middle East, which is what the U.S. military tells you to call them, right? Yeah, we call them hajis or towelheads. That's nice and professional. The military advocates towelheads, huh? Yeah, yeah, we use it in a lot of our like running chants. It's funny that the military is not really up to snuff with my modern HR standards, are they? Oh, what HR? There's no, <laughs> there's no HR department in the military. He was telling me that they all have to shower together with their cocks out, like seventy dudes. They all have to like piss on, shower heads. They all have to piss on top of each other. In the trough. They're like beating the shit out of each other if they fart. There are all these things going on in the military that wouldn't fly at Procter & Gamble or at uh, Google Inc. I think uh, the towel heads phrasing would not be accepted either. No, it's not socially accepted. Yeah, so the video got taken down, and I was so upset. But, you know, I don't think that it really had much bearing on my YouTube channel. Because eventually, Facebook, they were taking a bunch of shit for supposedly rigging the election. 
I don't even know oh, what yeah. it's about. So I they were like, them. no, no, that's not us. We're a family-friendly company. We're now going to prioritize posts from families and friends in your feed. That means comedians like me, our stuff, my stuff, Danny Mullins, is no longer going to reach my audience because the algorithm hates me now. That's how memes became a thing, as common as they are now on Facebook. How? Oh, you scroll down on Facebook now, you don't see videos anymore. All you see is memes that people have shared. Really? That's the yeah, algorithm favoring those now? Because it comes from your friends and family. Okay. It's still going on, I guess. But, uh, fuck, how dare you? You killed my train of thought, fan, Jerry. I'm oh, but, yeah, God forbid I talk on the podcast. <laughs> so I went from like 80,000 views per video on Facebook that I was getting at that point after several pretty viral videos to th- literally 300. I was, it was the night before I went to go see Bill Burr with my dad in Reno, Nevada. I was living in Sacramento at that point. I moved back to Sacramento. I clicked on my newest video. It had 300 fucking views down from 80,000. That's unfathomable. Like, if YouTube did that, I would be so distressed. Imagine if one of your videos got 300 views. See, that's... you. I was asking you about your biggest fears. That might be one of mine. That my videos suddenly are universally panned by all my audience. And I get five people watching them. Even though I get more than that. Yeah, you do. I'd have to start sucking your dick to get on your channel. 300 views, and I no, right there at the Bill Burr fucking concert when I noticed that, right before I went, I made the decision. I had a couple of whiskey cokes with my dad. I said, you know what? I'm moving down to fucking L.A. Me and my current roommate Noah were throwing the idea around. We had been for the last couple of months. I was like, I'm going to go down to fucking L.A., and that's going to put me in a do-or-die situation. The rents are going to be high. I'm not going to fucking know anybody. I'm going to dedicate myself to being a fucking entertainer because right now I'm 28, it's getting to be that time when I start telling people that I'm a struggling comedy writer and it doesn't come off so cute anymore. I needed to do something drastic. So I moved down here. Fan Jerry, you messaged me maybe my first week or so. When was it? What was the date? April 8th. It was the first time you messaged me? 2018. I think you messaged me on Facebook before that, though. Uh, I might have. I remember. No, I think this was our first message. Since April, moved to LA. April 9th? April 8th. April 8th. My sister's birthday, incidentally. Fan Jerry messages me. Let's read these right now. Fan Jerry said, since you moved to LA and I'm so, uh, a SoCal dude, I would literally do anything to come hang out with you and the bros. You guys are fucking awesome. Who were the bros at that point? Uh, I think it was just the cameraman and who else was in your video? Foo. Chef Mike. Chef Mike and Fu, huh? Yeah, they were in your videos back then, too. Yeah, Chef Mike, because we did the kissing old ladies. Yeah. There were a couple bros. Where do you live, dude, says Danny Mullen. Oceanside, exclamation mark, fan jury. Like 45 minutes north of San Diego. Honestly, man, I need people to come along on shoots and film, said Danny Mullen. Would you be down? It's easy. Just have a drink or two and hang out. Fan Jerry says, fuck yeah, I'd be down. I'm a Marine, so generally I work Monday through Friday, but my second job can fuck off, and I'll come up there Friday nights or the weekend if you want. If you swipe, right. Swipe right. Uh, I say, ha, 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 for sure. Let's talk on the phone this week. I'm thinking about making Sunday my filming days. We'll play up your Marine background. That could be a funny character. Hell yeah, dude. That's fucking awesome. You gave me your number, and I texted you. We met up at a macaroni grill? Yeah, macaroni grill. Across the road from a uh, Barnes & Noble. On a Sunday. Yeah, I was writing in the Barnes & Noble. He came. You had a Red Bull vodka. Yep. I had a Sam Adams Boston lager. That's the only thing we ordered in Macaroni and Grill. We sat down at a table and everything. And the server's name was Danny, wasn't it? Yeah. I think yeah, it, it was. was. And uh, we talked. Fan Jerry was telling me about where to shoot, uh, quote unquote, Haji in order to incapacitate them. The kneecaps, yep. right? Because they're always on heroin over there. No, hips. Hips. Hips? Yeah, bigger target. And they're always just on drugs over there, so he's got to yeah. shoot the legs out from under. Yeah, they're opioid off, but they like to spray, spray paint up their nose. Fan Jerry, I didn't know this. I guess all the people in the war on terror who aren't on our side are always on drugs and just running around with AKs. Yeah, it's not a government. It's just a bunch of fucking crackheads that are in a cult, basically. Who believe in Allah and who make improvised explosive devices. Yeah, they're really good at that. That's a talent of sorts. Yeah. If I could make some, I'd make them. I have the anarchist cookbook. I can let you borrow it. I don't think videos on bomb making are allowed. You don't have to put it on camera. You can just blow shit up. Yeah, maybe we'll think about it. I'm, I'm a busy man. IED is the, I don't think that's going to figure very high into my schedule. Fan Jerry eventually appeared in a real video, the Kissing Walmart employees, which 
I think is my second or maybe coming up on number one most viewed video. Most viewed video. That's it, a good one. It kind of pissed. I remember drinking a Red Bull before I went down there and I was really uncomfortable with the concept. And I understand why in retrospect. It's gnarly. Yeah, it was gnarly. It was a gnarly, scary shoot. And I remember listening to Grant Cardone's 10X on audiobook, which is one of my favorite books, and drinking a Red Bull and being like, all right, this is it, baby. If you want to be great, you got to do shit like this. And looking back now, it's comedically nowhere compared to what we do no, in 2020. It's not as, like, there's not as many jokes and stuff. It was more just the action. It's the action. It's a clickbait video. But the thing is, it kind of makes me mad, actually, is to this day, or not to this day, but right now, the last month, it's been my most viewed video every day. Really? It gets more views than the fake white belt prank, which is my second most viral video right now. Which I was also in. Yes, you are. There's a trend here we're starting to see. Fan Jerry is awesome. But part of me wants the Fan Jerry raps video, kissing gas station ladies like the Fresno oh, shoot. Oh yeah, that, those ones are good. Yelling, well, yelling rape and Target and the fake psychology experiment, which I think are my two best videos. Period. Yeah, those ones are amazing uh, stories. Those are surging right now too. But uh, kissing Walmart employees with Fan Jerry is always a really highly viewed video, and it's. Fucking monetized too, so that's good. Hey, thanks, YouTube. Thank you. Fanjar, I think that's gonna wrap it up. That sounds good to me, buddy. It was a good talk, good day. Fanjar's gotta get on a train, go back down to San Diego. San Diego. Where he's gonna calibrate various instruments and rescue his dog from a crackhead. Hey, he's not a crackhead. He just thinks um, the CIA and FBI are watching him. Fanjar's next door neighbors thinks the CIA is watching him, which it means he's a crackhead. Uh, he's, he's the return of the King of David. What does that mean? King David? He's the return of King David. Explain to the audience what the fuck that means. King David, religious figure. Does he say that, or do you say no, that? No, he says that. This guy's on that's a lot of crap. Why, that's why he thinks the FBI is... No, he's just nuts. He's on a lot of drugs. That doesn't come naturally. I'm surprised he can even pay that $1,000 rent. Well, Fan Jerry's dog, Riley, is currently in this man's grasp. Yes. That, that dog means more to me than Danny. That's who Fan Jerry is uh, having look after, the little brute. So you better hurry home and make sure she's safe. Godspeed. Thanks, buddy. Good talk.